July 3rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from the New Testament. Pursue love and be eager for the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For the one speaking in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. For no one understands, he is speaking mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouragement, and consolation. The one who speaks in a tongue builds himself up, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. I wish you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you would prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets so that the church may be strengthened. Now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I help you unless I speak to you with a revelation or with knowledge or prophecy or teaching? It is similar for lifeless things that make a sound like a flute or harp. Unless they make a distinction in the notes, how can what is played on the flute or harp be understood? If, for example, the trumpet makes an unclear sound, Who will get ready for battle? It is the same for you. If you do not speak clearly with your tongue, how will anyone know what is being said? For you will be speaking into the air. There are probably many kinds of languages in the world, and none is without meaning. If then I do not know the meaning of a language, I will be a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker a foreigner to me. It is the same with you. Since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, seek to abound in order to strengthen the church. So then, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unproductive. What should I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will sing praises with my spirit, but I will also sing praises with my mind. Otherwise, if you are praising God with your spirit, how can someone without the gift say amen to your thanksgiving, since he does not know what you are saying? For you are certainly giving thanks well, but the other person is not strengthened. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you, but in the church I want to speak five words with my mind to instruct others, rather than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers and sisters, do not be children in your thinking. Instead, be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. It is written in the law, By people with strange tongues and by the lips of strangers, I will speak to this people. Yet not even in this way will they listen to me, says the Lord. So then, tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is not for unbelievers, but for believers. So if the whole church comes together and all speak in tongues, and unbelievers or uninformed people enter, will they not say that you have lost your minds? But if all prophesy and an unbeliever or uninformed person enters, he will be convicted by all. He will be called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are disclosed, and in this way he will fall down with his face to the ground and worship God, declaring God is really among you. What should you do then, brothers and sisters, when you come together? Each one has a song, has a lesson, has a revelation, has a tongue, has an interpretation. Let all these things be done for the strengthening of the church. If someone speaks in a tongue, It should be two, or at the most three, one after the other, and someone must interpret. But if there is no interpreter, he should be silent in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should evaluate what is said. And if someone sitting down receives a revelation, the person who is speaking should conclude. For you can all prophesy one after another, so all can learn and be encouraged. Indeed, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, for God is not characterized by disorder, but by peace. As in all the churches of the saints, the women should be silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak. Rather, let them be in submission, as in fact the law says. 
If they want to find out about something, they should ask their husbands at home, because it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in church. Did the word of God begin with you, or did it come to you alone? If anyone considers himself a prophet or spiritual person, he should acknowledge that what I write to you is the Lord's command. If someone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. So then, brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy, and do not forbid anyone from speaking in tongues, and do everything in a decent and orderly manner. God, today I pray for all the churches, and there's so many of them here in the United States, I'm sure around the world too, who, who speak in tongues, not according to what Paul is talking about. When a congregation prays in tongues all at the same time, or I went to a church not too long ago where um, the pastor or preacher said, um, as they started the service, now all of you use your tongues. All of you use your own language. And he was referring to speaking in tongues and, and almost everybody in the congregation, hundreds and hundreds of people were speaking in tongues at the same time, completely against what Paul's talking about. Um, you need an interpreter, not more than three people, two or three at the most. Um, women aren't supposed to be included in that for the most part. That's a whole other, I know that's a whole other theology thing, but the reason for that is, is clear. One way makes man build himself up, makes himself important and does nothing for the unbeliever. In fact, it says they hear you do that and they think you're psycho. And the other one builds you up, God. If one or two or three of them is speaking in tongues in turn and as an interpreter, then everybody in the congregation can learn and the unbelievers who are in the midst will also be elevated uh, to new knowledge, to an opportunity to learn more about you. Uh, of course, when you're by yourself, you can speak in tongues because it's speaking directly to you. And, and so it's all about you. But God, in these congregations where everybody's speaking tongues all at the same time, there's no interpretation. It's all about the people. And it's almost, well, at least the church I went to, it becomes like a little bit like a mass hysteria that if one person does it, suddenly everybody can do it. And it's like they breed people who can speak in tongues, whereas it's a gift from you. It's not, <laughs> it's not something that people can learn to do. Sorry, that's kind of my pet peeve. God, I just pray for these churches. I pray that they learn and understand your word and more importantly share it with their congregations that the congregations understand why it's so important to follow this um, these aren't a bunch of rules that you put down to make it hard for us to do anything these are actually rules that help give us freedom freedom to witness to other people freedom to live up lift up the congregation and the people around us freedom to make it all about you instead of all about us god God, I just pray for those churches that, that they start to understand that it does need to be all about you. It needs to be all about worship to you and what your will is and not about building us up or building some preacher person up. That our language with you, whether it's English or a foreign language or speaking in tongues, needs to and deserves the honor of being all about you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.